Greetings and greetings. My fellow YouTube nurses, today we're gonna to talk about delegating and being proactive for a patient. That's our career, that's what we have to do. We gotta take care of our patients. We are their number one individual to take care of them, correct? So the first thing you're gonna do, get a baseline vital signs, right? That's what you gotta follow up. Get some labs, CBC, CAM panel, do a rainbow set of labs, PTT, honor, whatever you're gonna get. But most importantly, vital signs and uh, the change of the condition. So first thing you're gonna look for, temperature, right? We'll go very basic. 37 degrees Celsius is normal. Anything below that, anything above that, 38, 39, we have an issue. What if they have an infection? Don't give them Tylenol. That's just a Band-Aid. That's not going to cover everything up. It's just going to put a little Band-Aid, right? So you got to follow up maybe some blood cultures, uh, sputum cultures. They have respiratory issues. If they have any you know, bladder issues, get a UA. And if they have any wounds coming in, get a wound culture. Call the doctor and notify. Let them know about that, right? Another thing that could, uh, they have to look for, it's a red flag, is their heart rate. Normal heart rate is what, 60 to 100. What if their heart rate starts jumping up? They go tacky, possibly go to SVT, who knows? They could be in pain, anxious, nervous, hard time breathing, they could be in shock, which the blood pressure drops, heart rate goes up, it compensates, correct? So you have to follow up on that. Um, so with heart rate going up like that, what if they have history of you know, heart failure? Are they on uh, beta blockers? Are they on blood thinners? Do they have AFib? Um, history. Maybe what if their ejection fraction is 15, 20, 30 percent? They went to cath lab. So you have to be a detective, follow up on the heart. Any rhythm changes, like I said earlier, get EKG. What if they go sinus brady, heart rate below 60? Then maybe they're on a pacemaker, maybe it's not catching, it's not reading. That's going to be very important. You have to follow up on that. So, like I said, it's very important to follow up on anything in that situation. Another thing, too, is uh, blood pressure. Normally, we have systolic 120, diastolic over 80. So if their blood pressure all of a sudden goes super high randomly, maybe they're not, they didn't take enough blood pressure medications, their pain will increase the blood pressure to go up. Um, another thing that will increase blood pressure medications is are the fluid volume overloaded? Um, do they have, are they on IV? Maybe you need to discontinue, follow up on that. Another thing too is um, with their blood pressure going up is the infection. Sometimes when you're hot, your blood pressure will go up or it can lead the other way around. They can go in a hypotensive state, below 120. I mean, you got maybe 90, 80, down to over 60. We have, that's a huge red flag too, guys. Follow up on that. What if they took too many blood pressure medications? Um, they're hypotensive state due to shock, infection, which the temperature goes up, heart rate goes up, blood pressure drops. Um, and that's not a very good thing because what if they're internally, maybe externally bleeding? Assess the body to see if there's any uh, maybe hematomas, uh, follow up on the whole body. That's why it's very important to do assessment, guys. Full head to toe assessment. And then the other one you're going to follow up after all that is respiratory rate. Yeah, what is it? Normally 16, 18, 20. This is the most commonly, commonly made up number when we chart. Stupid. We shouldn't do that. Respiratory rate is very important. What if the rate starts going up? 20, 24, 28. Assess the patient. Are they in pain? Are they nervous? Are they anxious? Um, are they having a hard time breathing? Look at the O2 sets. Put them on two, it doesn't hurt to put them on two liters, three, four liters. Get a stat ABG, follow up on this patient. Look at their history, are they a smoker, or do they COPD? Follow up on this guys. Um, you might even need to follow up and get a chest x-ray. So that's another thing for respirations. Another one you're gonna follow up to, the other vital sign that I like to say is pain. It's my favorite one, it cracks me up because pain is the funniest, funniest, funniest vital sign that people have. I throw this in there because patients look at me and they'll be on their cell phone and they'll be like 10 out of 10 pain. They'll be fine, they'll be communicating, but don't ignore that guys. That's something you gotta follow up on and it's very important. Look at the location, um, find out where the pain, find out where, the, where it's at, what it's causing it. Is it internal, is it external, is it throbbing, is it um, pounding, is it dull? Follow up on that, it's very important when you tell the doctor. And then the other one is mentation. This one is very important because they can have changes in vital signs, but if the patient is asymptomatic, I mean, you still got to let the doctor know, but it's not kind of a rush. But you got to read. You got to be a detective. So what if they came in alert-oriented, person, place, time, situation? Follow up on that. They can have change in mentation. They can be lethargic, obtunded, disoriented, confused. Maybe they hit their head. They didn't tell you. Uh, they fell. Follow up with a CT. Get an MRI. Let the doctor know. It'll be a neuro issue now. So these are all the things that are very important for lead tube nurses. And also what's important is you gotta look for SIRS, right? S-I-R-S, Systemic Inflammatory Response Syndrome. Like I mentioned earlier, temperature goes up, 
red flag. All of a sudden, blood pressure goes up or down, red flag. Heart rate, too high, too low, red flag. And if the respiration rates go up above 20, red flag. So WBCs, it's very important to follow that up too. If it's above 4, 14,000, we got a problem. If it's below 4,000, follow up on that, guys. Get a lactic acid. These are all problems of shock that could occur to the body from infection. So the other thing that happens is could be from inflammation, trauma, uh, uh, burns, um, infection, which you're going to look for. It could be caused from uh, parasites. It could be caused from fungi. It could be caused from viral or bacteria uh, infection. And these are all most important ones we have to look up, guys. So when you see changes in condition, mentation, vital signs, don't ignore it. It'll bite you in the butt. So be detective, follow up, be proactive, and delegate for your patients. My fellow YouTube nurses, any questions, concerns, comments, drop it on the bottom. Don't forget to subscribe, hit that like button, and uh, share these videos, my friends. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, Nurse Mendoza here, Twitter, Instagram. My fellow YouTube nurses, deuces. <laughs>